So welcome everyone. My name is Nicola McNevin. I am Education Lead for JA Nova Scotia. Thank you for volunteering to deliver Dollars with Sense um, at school. And we have a variety of uh, volunteers on the call today. So each of, each of you has a different assignment and I will share those uh, with the materials and the recording and the slide deck following the call, all the details of the school that you'll be going to. So for the purpose of the call, I do have um, some slides to share. And we should get through these in about uh, 30 minutes. So uh, for I know some of you have probably volunteered for JA Nova Scotia in the past. For those of you who haven't, uh, we are an international not-for-profit organization formed to bring together business leaders such as yourselves, educators, parents, and the community to help youth prepare for their future. JA was formed in Massachusetts in 1919, and we have been a charter in Nova Scotia since 1969. And the programs are offered free of charge uh, to youth aged 3 to 25, all JA, all JA programs in Nova Scotia, our program delivery currently is from grade five up. Our core purpose is to inspire and prepare young people to succeed in the global economy. Our values are belief in the boundless potential of young people, commitment to the principles of market-based economics and entrepreneurship, passion for what we do, and honesty, integrity, and excellence in how we do it, respect for the talents, creativity, perspectives, and backgrounds of all individuals, belief in the power of partnership and collaboration, conviction in the educational and motivational impact of relevant hands-on learning. In 2011, I know that's ages ago, Jay had an impact study done um, by Boston Consulting Group. So though it is a while back, uh, the, the, um, the um, outcome of those, uh, that study is still quite significant. Over 75% of achievers indicated that junior achievement is key to developing financial literacy skills. Over 75% of achievers indicated that JA inspired them to stay in school. And on average, uh, achievers at that time earned more than 50% than non-achievers. And at that time, achievers contributed $535 million to the Canadian economy. We do deliver programs um, throughout the province uh, in classroom, and also we have an after-school program. So our, I guess, our flagship program, company program, is an 18-week entrepreneurship program. Um, that's the program that most people know JA for, um, but I think it is uh, important that people have an understanding that there, we're in the classroom sometimes and students say, oh, I, I don't know what JA is, but then they remember Oh, yeah, I did that exercise about budgeting. Um, so uh, we they may not know our name, um, but they probably have had some experience um, with volunteers in the classroom delivering program prior to the grade nine or grade 10 students that you'll be seeing. Dollars with Sense is designed to help students to start learning about uh, personal finance, including debit cards, credit cards, and investments. It's an interactive program designed to help informing about the various personal financial choices and what information is important for their financial success. Small group work on budgeting, personal investment, and money management. Engaging activities introduce concepts and stimulate discussion for the students. And your role is to facilitate some key components of this program. JA is sponsored by the business community, banks, cooperatives, co co cooperations, corporations, foundations, and individuals who give generously to make these programs happen in classes across Nova Scotia free of charge to teachers and students. And we are also highly funded by the Department of Education and Department of Labor and Advanced Education. So we ask that volunteers are sensitive um, and share positive stories only when speaking of past experiences. Teaching techniques, uh, please be yourself, be prepared and arrive early, use students' names as much as possible, circulate around the room, be aware of the time, one hour does go very quickly, be energetic, uh, enthusiastic, engage the students as much as possible, ask a lot of questions, discussion is key for their engagement. Integrate your own style and energy. The value of you being in the classroom is 
your uniqueness and your own experience, your education path and professional path. Um, so please take time to share that with the students. Ask questions to keep the students involved and active. Always use positive reinforcement. Be sensitive to students' special circumstances. Use language that students can understand. Use examples from the student's frame of reference. Um, so when we're speaking uh, about you know, investment and finances, oftentimes this is the first time students have uh, had experience around this or thought about these things. So if you're able to relate it to things that are relevant to their life, that's very helpful. And please refer to the classroom teacher as needed. Child Protection Policy and Volunteer Code of Conduct. As per the JA pro Program Volunteer Code of Conduct, volunteers are not to have any inappropriate contact inside or outside the classroom. Transport program participants. Be in contact with any student inside or outside the classroom without prior consent and knowledge of JA staff, the student's teacher and or parent and guardian. Express personal opinions during program delivery that are not endorsed by J Nova Scotia. For example, we ask that you do not share your religious or political views with students. Uh, the teacher must remain in the class throughout the volunteer's experience to be in compliance with the child protection policy. The teacher may skip out for a second. Don't panic. That often happens. Maybe they go to grab a glass of water. I assure you they will only leave if things are going very well. Um, but they, they, they do know that they are to be there with you to support you. Here's some tips on what to do when. Uh, if you have a compulsor, compulsive talker, acknowledge their answer and encourage others to participate. Oftentimes there are opportunities to have um, a student who is very keen to assist you. You could ask them to hand out the workbooks or hand out the name cards. Sometimes you could have them act as scribe and, and take notes on the whiteboard. So writing down what other students' answers are or the points that you are making. If you begin to lose control of the class, ask the teacher for help. That's why they're there. Um, but I say to volunteers, you should never get to the point where you feel like you're losing control. If you feel that the students are not paying attention, if they're on their phones um, or they're just not engaging, just check in with the teacher to see if there's something that um, they could help you with. If a student chooses not to participate, that's okay. Encourage them to do so but we don't know a student's particular circumstance. Um, so if they choose not to uh, take part in any part of the program, that's fine. If the class does not respond to your question, give them time to think about the answer. Again, a lot of this is new information for them. Um, and so stand in that eight to 10 seconds of awkward silence and wait for them to have an opportunity to think about it. You can rephrase the question. Also ask them if they understood and you can give examples of the type of answers that you're hoping to get from them and then give them another moment to think. I'm going to just check the chat here quickly to see if there's any questions. Any questions thus far? Okay. So I will send in the email following the call um, the details of the schools that each of the volunteers are going to. Um, and if you have any questions once you get that email, let me know. But those details will include the number of students at the school that the volunteers will be delivering to, the number of classes, um, where to park, what to do on arrival, and who will greet you once you're there. I will also send the a digital copy of the facilitator's guide, the specific components that you're delivering. So to give you an idea, in the past, um, we delivered the entirety of the program or volunteers delivered the entirety of the program, which would take a few hours and an entire morning. Coming out of post-COVID restrictions, we've decided to limit um, the, the volunteer delivery to one hour. One of the concerns that we had or one of the reasons we did this is because we do uh, appreciate and understand the stresses on workplaces right now um, and the you know, ability of employers and employees to leave the workplace for extended periods of time with labor shortages. So we are just doing certain components 
and I'll get into more details on these in a few moments, the teachers have the option to deliver the other pieces of the program as they see fit. Um, but digitally, I will send you just what you are doing. When you get to the classroom, there will be um, all of the resources there. So don't panic. You're not expected to use all of those. Um, and it, I will give details of exactly what pieces of that kit, um, the program kit, will be relevant for you. So you'll receive your component of the uh, resource, uh, the facilitator's resource guide um, and the aligning student workbook pages, an agenda with details and some discussion points and the timing of the delivery, as well as a, um, a piece on how to prepare for the classroom. So again, you know, some more tips and tricks um, and some discussion points that you may want to include with your delivery. In the classroom, you may see, uh, well, you'll see the workbooks that the students will need. You'll see their name cards um, so that they can share their names with you. You'll also want the needs, wants, goals cards. Those are in the kit. And, but you'll see other things. So you'll see there's like a game board and there's some JA dollars uh, and some other things, but those aren't relevant to you. As I mentioned, the teacher may use those afterwards. Using the facilitator's guide, the lesson in the program guide uh, gives the preparation for class instructions, as I mentioned, a general overview of the program, learning objectives, a list of the resources you will need, tips uh, for volunteers such as discussion questions, and it will let you know what activities require the students to use their portfolios or their workbooks. You'll see a little pencil icon and activities that use multimedia resources. So in the workbook, it suggests that you use the JA Digital Campus. What I've done um, with the respect to one hour going really quickly and the complications that arise when using tech, I have pulled those pieces out and I will send you the direct links. Um, there's two YouTube videos and there is an online calculator. So I'm going to send those directly to you and I'll also send those to the teacher in hope that they will have those queued for you before you get there. I don't want volunteers getting bogged down in trying to ask, access um, some our resources via the JA Digital Campus where you have to sign in and, and whatnot. So um, I'm trying to make that as simple as possible for you. However, you will see the multimedia resource icon in the workbook. So using the agenda, uh, as I mentioned, you only do the specific activities from lesson three, which is spending, saving, sharing, and lesson four, make your money work for you. Keep an eye on the time. An hour does go extremely quickly. It lists the page number in your facilitator guides and what it aligns to in the student workbook. And uh, as I said, it gives you some tips. There is a note that there is an opportunity to give the students a stretch break, but I have found uh, since going back in the classroom, just one hour goes so quick and the students are so excited to have volunteers and guest speakers in there that there likely will not be any need for anyone to take a break. Are there any questions? Okay, all good. So the learning objectives for this program, oh, we have someone joining. Hi, Renee, welcome. Thanks for joining. Can you hear me okay? Okay, I think we're good. We did, we have started, but we'll continue along. Um, as I mentioned, we'll, we will be sharing the recording and I'll share the slides after the call. So the learning objectives of dollars with cents, students will have a better understanding about money, what it's used for and how we spend it and the different forms that comes in, personal spending habits and what they add up to, financial success and that it starts early with budgeting and making your money work for you and personal investment goals. Again, these are the learning objectives of the entire program. The teachers have received um, the agenda with the suggestions on pre-activities that are possible to do with their students prior to your visit. Whether they have had time to do this or not, 
I'm not sure. Um, it's not necessary that they do, but it is good if you know, if you're able to ask the teacher if they have done any of the program with the students prior to you going. Um, so then you can sort of speak to those things and on a very light um, level, and I'll, I'll go through that, maybe just a couple of questions you can ask to refer back. I'll let you know what the teacher may have done with the students. Again, it's not relevant to the pieces you deliver other than for you to have a little bit of knowledge and make some connectivity um, to what the students, what the teacher has done and what you'll be doing with them. So it is recommended that they do lesson one, money makes the world go round, and lesson two, smart shopping on an online world. Um, and I'll talk about what, what those two components uh, include. In Money Makes the World Go Round, students learn about money as a means of exchange for goods and services, learn how to conduct transactions using a variety of different methods of payment in different situations. Um, they talk about, uh, you know, what their, um, what money means to them, how, you know, how they value what they see as wealth or success. They talk about how you will pay the cost of credit, um, credit cards, debit cards, and then they look at international currencies. And there's a reflection piece where they talk about what they learned and what was new for them. In lesson two, smart shopping in an online world, um, students learn about making good financial decisions about how they spend their money and an important part of, and the importance of money management. They reflect on the factors that influence people's spending and learn to be a smart consumer. I find this piece really interesting. Um, you know, why do we buy the things we do? What influences us? Then they talk about um, online safe sites and how to determine whether an online site is safe um, and then look at their own uh, consumer habits. And then uh, this is where you come in. So the in-person volunteer led lesson three, spending, saving, sharing. The students will distinguish between needs and wants, understand that goals change over time, and understand the importance of budgeting. For this lesson, the schedule is an introduction and icebreaker, which will take about 10 minutes, and I'll give some suggestions as to what you might want to do with that. Activity one, the needs, wants, goals activity, takes about 15 minutes, and activity three in lesson three is 10 minutes talking about credit scores. In lesson four, the volunteer will lead uh, Make Your Money Work For You. Students will learn about different investment and saving vehicles, discover the concept of interest through exploring the impact of saving, and explain how wealth can be built through investing. And in this lesson, activity one, become investment wise, takes about 15 minutes. Activity three, credit reports, takes about 10 minutes. And then there's a few minutes or a couple of minutes for a wrap up. So in terms of um, your own introduction, please uh, let the students know what you do, share with them your own education and career path. Um, They'll want to know about you. If you're able to talk or link your being there to JA Nova Scotia, we appreciate that. Um, you can just say whatever you're aware of about JA, that we deliver programs to youth in school throughout the province. And if they are interested in more information, they can visit our website. As an icebreaker, I suggest handing out the name cards um, and then going around having the students introduce themselves. Very simply, you can ask you know, to say your name, um, your pronoun if you care to share and ask them what they want to do after high school. I find this is a really important piece. It gives the students a sense of um, connecting with you um, and then you just get to know a little bit about them and, and where they are and what they've thought about their future. If the teachers have done some of the pre-activities, you can ask the students what they've learned so far. Um, you know, are they a spender or a saver? And what influences their spending? And you can go around either have that as part of, part of their introduction, um, or you can ask for hands up. I did mention we have a digital campus with resources, uh, but I will be sending the links which I've pulled for what you'll need directly to YouTube and, an, and a calculator. So you don't have to um, fuss too much with the tech access. Any questions thus far?
Yeah, I think we're good. So lesson three, spending, sharing, saving, core activity one, needs, wants, goals. I really like this activity. Um, so you'll see it, it says the activity. This is what shows on your agenda. The activity, the page in the facilitator's guide, and the aligning page in the student guide. And then that you'll need the needs, wants, goals cards, which will be in the kit, which will be in your classroom. Explain that there are nine items identified on needs, wants, goals cards. This is like backpack, cell phone. And some of the items represent needs, some represent wants, and some cards represent goals. And you, as you show each card to the class, the class must decide whether the item is a need, want, or goal. And they're going to align them with a stage of life. So as a teen, is this a need, want, goal, a young adult, or a parent? Um, what you'll find is there will be it will generate discussion because needs, wants, goals can change over time. So it may depend on where you are in life, um, what that means to you, what that item could potentially mean. So some really great discussion generated with that activity. And the students have a page in their workbook where they will then define or identify some needs, wants, goals of their own. Um, and with their want or goal, they're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask if they have any source of income you know, if they're doing any babysitting, if they have a part-time job, the students will probably be age 15, 16, depending on if they're grade nine or grade 10. And if they have the ability to save money on a weekly basis, um, they're then going to calculate what would, how much they could spend or save in a month and determine how long it would take them to save for their particular want or goal. And this is a very simple sort of budgeting exercise, but gives them the idea on how we, you know, save for our future for the things that we look forward to. Any questions about this? Go ahead, Renee. So the question is, will you get a copy of the workbook? I'm going to send you a digital copy of the pages that align with your um, components along with the facilitator pages as well. So you will see those. When you get to the classroom, the students obviously will have the entire workbook and there should be an extra copy for you um, in the classroom as well. So you shouldn't have to take anything with you. You don't have to take anything with you. Some volunteers do print off the agenda, which has the timing just so that you have it handy so you can refer to that as you're going along. Excellent. Thank you. So in spending, sharing, saving, core activity three, which is credit scores, um, be aware that there is an activity two, which we're not doing. It's a project budget where, and the teachers may do this, but they probably haven't done it before you get there. Um, but just for your awareness, and when you look in the book, it could be a little bit confusing because core activity three starts by suggesting that you're, you know, if the students are doing a project, but and they have a budget that they can't pay for, um, what would happen if they bought things on credit? So it just sort of leads into the discussion on credit cards, but you can jump right in um, to talk about credit score. So uh, begin the activity by explaining that there are agencies called credit bureaus um, that collect information and provide a credit score for lending institutions to use when making loan decisions. So not necessarily credit card, but the loaning. Um, and you'll have access to the YouTube video, which I will also send to the teachers. So hopefully, as I mentioned, they should have this queued for you. Um, you can watch the YouTube video with the students, uh, what is a credit score? And you can pause that and talk about different points as you want. It is a very short one, um, and I'll send it in the email with the resources after the call. Lesson four, make your money work for you. Become investment wise. Um, students, oh, I see we have a question. Yeah, this is super important. This is such incredible content, honestly, to get and to have the students have this at age 15, 16. Um, I have some younger colleagues in the office yesterday who don't deliver this program and they were looking through it and they're like, I need to do this program. Um, so it, it is super great. And that's, I love that, um, that you feel that way about it. So 
Become investment wise, discuss the different types of investment vehicles. Students will write the risk level associated with each investment vehicle and students can share their rankings. And you might want to use the whiteboard for that if you want. Um, I, I tend to use the whiteboard a lot. I write a lot of things as I go along, just some points um, and to give them something, you know, to, to look at, but it's entirely up to you and your comfort level in, in the room. So you're going to look at GIC, mutual fund stocks, etc and do some savings calculations with various interest rates. And I'll send you the link with the Save a Million calculator and it's super fun. Um, the students find this really interesting to see how money and investment can make money. They are very excited to talk about money as well. You'll find that. And in lesson four, make your money work for you, core activity two, credit reports. You will explain to students that along with investment, it's important to know what reports are available that tell your credit history. So together, students will look at how individuals and lenders get the information about credit history. You can watch the YouTube video, a quick guide to your credit report and credit score as a resource. And I just have a note there that in the facilitator guide, it says that it's student workbook page 25. Um, but the checklist or the activity that they do aligned with this is actually on page 26. So don't panic. Um, there is just a typo in that facilitator guide, but I wanted to make you aware of that. And that will be noted in the agenda that we send you as well. Any questions at this point? Wonderful. If anything comes up, uh, any questions at all, please contact me. Um, you can give me a call. Uh, we can have another meeting. It's an, uh, I'm available. And then you're going to wrap up. Um, I think it's really important or sometimes very valuable for volunteers to share with the students how you found the experience, um, especially where, you know, we're not teachers and we're not in a classroom every day. It's nice for them to hear what you found valuable of the experience in volunteering. Um, thank the class and the teacher and give them a little opportunity, maybe a minute um, to see if there's anything that they want to say to you. Oftentimes the um, teachers or the students may have a thank you card or they may have designated designated a student to say a few words to you before you leave. You can ask the teacher if they want to collect the workbooks, but usually the, the teachers will take care of all that and they don't need you to do that for them. Um, and then you are free to leave. And that's basically it. What questions do you have? Super. Okay. I love it. So the questions were, this is great. This is helpful. That's what I want to hear. And that's what I'm, that's why I am here. Um, and uh, for those that have done it in the past and you've come back, welcome back. And for new volunteers, we're so happy to have you on board. Um, I'll get this out this afternoon. I hope everyone stays well. And I really look forward to the feedback of your experience um, in volunteering next week. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>